this is the ultimate piece of Chineseium, is what it is. It, it's almost like a Hot Wheels car, uh, almost like a toy car, but it's actually a real car, and is a real Chinese car. With, let's see what's on the odometer. Oh my goodness, does this thing work? I have no idea what this thing is. I do know it has a two-cylinder gasoline engine, and it has 244 kilometers on the odometer. See that right there? Yeah, fascinating little piece of equipment. Let's see if it's gonna start. Starting the engine. Wow, okay. It ain't got no gas in it. The tack doesn't work. All right. Yeah, so what we're gonna do, there is no customer. Uh, this uh, vehicle is owned by, uh, by my neighbor next door to the shop. Uh, he bought this thing from Craigslist or somewhere like that, and it is 100% a Chineseium automobile. Uh, I just kind of wanted to get, uh, take a tour of this thing, take a look at it, show you guys uh, what they're driving overseas. Let's turn the AC on. And uh, we'll just give it a cool little walk around tour and, and see what this thing's really made of. If it's gonna go into gear. Hang on here. There we go, that's gear. Now we're in reverse. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this is this thing's something else, that's for sure. I don't know. If, first gear, there we go. It has no power steering. It has no door panels. It has no electric anything inside, except for that radio right there with a USB plug and uh, an air conditioner. I think that's all that it's got. Maybe the horn works. Now, I hear the horn relay clicking, but it does not turn on. Look, we can see daylight from inside of the doors. Look at there. Wow, that's uh, that's special. All right, let's get this thing into the shop real quick. I wanna see if we can fit it on a lift, and then we're really gonna take a look at this and, and run our mouths just about, or on uh, how much of a piece of crap this thing really is. Lauren, look at the, the new car we got. That's cute, what are we gonna do with it? It's a gas saver, it's got a two cylinder engine. Who's driving this? You, uh, can you drive Where a manual? Where am I gonna fit all the kids? No, oh, that's not for them, no, they can, we they can, can ride, stay home. We can drive do you know how to ride a manual? Can, uh, you drive, manual? can you drive a manual? Yeah, it's a manual transmission. Let me see. It's got a, it's I, a stick shift. Can I you? can learn on it. Well then okay, I will teach you. I tried learning in high school, but I never, uh, I it's, never It's succeeded. all about the, the friction yeah. zone, <laughs> the friction zone. Here, let me, let me get in the shop real okay. quick and we're gonna take a, take a look at this piece of junk. Opening Z hood. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look who that guy is. Hello everybody, good day to you and welcome back. Glad you guys are here. I know, I'm super glad to be here. This is going to be an interesting, different type of video than what my normal content format uh, usually consists of. We have managed to get a hold of, of this thing. I don't even know what this is. It's a Chineseium vehicle. Uh, I don't know the logo. It's super tiny, like golf cart sized. It's not my car. It's not a customer's car. It belongs to the to Sam, the body shop guy next door. He uh, he bought the thing on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. It was uh, it was just a really cool find, and he had to have it. Uh, when I saw it, I had to have it because I've never seen something like this before. But uh, I figured you guys would not mind taking a look at it, and so we're gonna do like a like a walk around tour uh, inspection, so to speak, of a, of a imported into the United States Chineseium automobile. Uh, I don't even know if this thing is titled. I don't know if it's legal to drive on the roads. I, I don't know anything about it other than what we're about to find out today. I have not been in this car except to pull it up to the parking space. I have not driven it, but uh, we're gonna do all that stuff and check this thing out. So let's get started. From what I know, this is a, uh, a Chinese Activa is what it says in the back, like on the back of the, the hatch or whatever. Um, it is a car, I assume it's an automobile, and uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna put this on the rack and check it out, see what this thing does. It's got all kinds of really interesting, odd features that usually most of us are not accustomed to seeing, like a stick shift. Is it gonna start? Oh, come on. Okay, so every time we turn the radio off, it has to be turned back down. There we go, it starts. All right, let's see what happens here. Starting the engine. Come on. Some gas. All right, it's alive. I think it's carbureted too. Wow. I don't even know where to begin with this thing. Yep, turn the radio back down. 
I guess the radio unit automatically turns itself back up every time you turn the key off. Uh, it's got a fast forward and a rewind volume and uh, a mode button. It doesn't seem to have stations. I don't know how to change them, at least. Uh, it's got an SD card and a USB thing and a little slot for whatever you want to put in there, I guess. Um, no glove box. It has some relays and some fuses. That's crazy. Um, and it's got a lot of air vents in it. Looking through right here, I can see outside atmosphere through that door seal. Um, I can see atmosphere through this door seal, so the build quality is spectacular. The horn works. That's cool. And it's got some pieces sitting on the floor here. I'm not sure what's going on. The door panels are either were not installed or have fallen off. Um, I don't know about the windows. I, I'm assuming the windows go down on this brand new car, but I don't see like the crank or the buttons or whatever to make them run up and down. I'm assuming they're electric because there's some wires in the doors, but I, I don't know. We're gonna find out. It has a dome light that, oh, there we go. That sort of works. LED dome light. It's uh, it's equipped with a sunroof. Got to have those high-end features on your on your Chinese automobile. We've got some sun visors that don't stay up. Wow, this is almost like one of those little moped scooters, but with four wheels. Like that's what this thing feels like. Anyway, let's pull this thing into the shop. I want to put it on a rack. We're gonna pop the hood. Take a look down below. I want to see what this thing's really made of. Trying to see if I can't get this thing centered up on these lift posts somehow, some way. It's about as far forward as I think we can go. I hope the front end clears. Okay, so we have, what is this? Auto frog lamp? What? I don't even know what that means. Auto frog lamp. Okay, it has air conditioning. Engine just did a bunch of shaky stuff. This thing's all vibrating. It feels horrible. It's got a blower motor. I mean, volt outlet hot and cold so it has some creature comforts it appears it's got it's got wiper blades Let's see if it has any spray does it spray nah that switch doesn't work but it has wiper blades that's cool uh, turn signals that one works it's got those it's got lights high beams okay <laughs> look at this right here it has 244 kilometers on the odometer. What is that, like 110 miles or something like that? 120 miles? So it has almost no mileage on it. Um, the weird linkage. I don't even know where to start with this thing. Headliner's falling down. It's got some mold residue in it. Seats are in good shape. Wow. Yeah, this thing's like a, it's like a little Tonka toy. Okay, let's turn the AC off. Like, look at this. Even the switches are maximum Chinesium. That is the cheapest possible sort of switch thing you could ever find. And they drive around in these things? Like, anybody from China, do you guys, like, have these things in real life? Or is this, like, is this, like, some kind of a joke? Like, I feel like the scooter people have made just, like, an extra large scooter. And that's what, uh, what we have here. Super chintzy plastic. Those aren't even adjustable. Look, that's a fake adjustable vent. It does not adjust. It's just like a, it's just there. Okay. Well, let's see what's under the hood here. Um, da, da, da. How do I get in? Let's put the parking brake on. A little bit of safety. Oh, there it is. That's the hood release way over there on the floor. Pop that. I didn't hear it, but something, something made like a twangy noise. Okay. Wow. Dang, okay. Well, like I said, it's a car. It's a Chinese Activa. The paint's not that great. Body panel fitment, also not that great. Yeah, look at that right there. We have interference of components. All right, I'm gonna need like a hood prop here. Because it does not have its own hood prop, so I'll put one in. The battery's disconnected, hence the jumper box. Let's get this stuff out of the way and we can see what we're, uh, what we've got to play with in here. It's rudimentary at best, I can tell you that. Put that right there. So we're gonna need to see what we're working on. Let's uh, throw this light bar thing in here. 
see if that's gonna fit like that look at that it barely it barely holds on to a four foot light bar dave look at this the light bar is wider than the car is with the exception of the mirrors yeah we got like two inches here and then well it's close yeah so it's about as wide as a light bar look at this thing a little two cylinder single cam oh that's cool they put in two coils there's their battery down there in the hole these cables look like uh they look like walmart car audio cables <laughs> don't they look at that like there's nothing to this thing it's this is so simple and cheap no way all right it's got a little radiator in there a little fan that's cute it has air conditioning i don't know if it works but oh shredder valves leaking i heard it it went pssst. wow i wonder if this thing has catalytic converters on it i bet it doesn't have a converter Look at this cute little brake booster. Look at that thing. It's like the size of a coffee can. Washer fluid reservoir. It's a, that's the receiver dryer for the AC. This looks like pirated Volkswagen parts. Yeah, that's a Volkswagen style coolant overflow. That's funny. Threads are stripped. Oh, let's see if it has oil in it. Yes, it has brand new oil in it. It probably needs an oil change. Guaranteed fuel injected that means it's got an ECU somewhere there's a little baby alternator down there it probably makes 12 amps there's the clutch cable I think or maybe that's just a crank sensor yeah there's a wire dangling right there a couple sensors over here coolant temp uh, I don't see anything else there's the clutch cable back there I see it there's all the linkage little throttle body that's a what is this right here manifold temperature or pressure sensor sure but hey it is fuel injected that's kind of cool okay yeah there's not much in there all right let's uh see if we can't get the rack set up maybe we can lift this thing up in the air and it won't fall and collapse in on itself we can take a look at the underneath carriage oh gotta lock your gas cap It's like a tin can look at this thing shake watch this close the door and it's like Brrrt. wow okay oh let's see about this rack here it's like does it have lift points or you just kind of go wherever huh. no pinch weld. there's nothing yeah there's no pinch welds there's some structure there's some structure right here by the brake lines we can use that see what i'm talking about yeah we'll use that that looks good and then this other side here I think there's some front structure we can use. Yeah, yep. Slide that up there. Whoa, gravitas. No catalytic converter. There's no converter on it? Oh no, it's polluting. <laughs> oh no, okay. How's your side look, you good? Yeah. All right, let us hit the black subscribe button. <laughs> Yep, gotta check the rack for safety. Even though it's a micro machine, it can still make you smash. Yeah, it's a micro machine. Remember those little cars from back in the day, the little miniature, little Hot Wheels micro machines? I wish I still had my toy micro machine collection. Lauren's like eyeballing me like, what are you, what are you doing with this? What are you doing? I guess we're uh, I mean, I kind of like it. I should teach, I'm going to buy this to teach you how to drive a quick shift. Will you drive this instead of your van to save gas money? Sure. Yeah, right. I, I would not put you or my children behind the wheel of this car. No way. I'll drive that around the neighborhood. I mean, yeah, it's a cool golf cart, but I don't think like on the roads it's a good idea. All right, well, looking from our front side going back first thing i wanted to take a peek at was the absence of a catalytic converter so this vehicle has zero emissions controls whatsoever it's got a little muffler it's got a flex pipe up there's the exhaust manifold from the outside of the cylinder head it looks like lawnmower stuff and following the exhaust back there is zero converter oh another muffler unless this is the converter no no, that's a muffler too. That's definitely not a converter. 
So this thing has zero emissions controls. Uh, that confirms my position on the fact that we just outsource our pollution to the other side of the jet stream and then they can pollute a whole bunch and then it just goes up and sends it right back over here to us anyway. But we're paying the taxes on that, so I'm gonna guess that's fair. But it appears that uh, the EPA is not involved in Chinese automotive manufacturing. This is cool, look at that. They put in diagnostic equipment in the fuel system like right away. US General, that's Harbor Freight. So they've got a Harbor Freight fuel pressure gauge. Oh wait, no, that's a tire gauge. Look, Dave, look at this. Four by four tire gauge. They've got a tire gauge attached to the fuel lines uh, on the gas tank. I'm assuming that's the tank. So they have a tire pressure gauge on the fuel pump. That's fantastic. It's got disc brakes. That's kind of cool, I guess. That one doesn't turn. Maybe I put the parking brake on. Yeah, park brake must be on. So it's got disc brakes. It's got McPherson struts front and rear. That's okay, I guess. Uh, it's fully welded frame. Lots of weld action going on here. That's horrible. Body plugs. Look at that, look at this fender bracket right here. Look at that, that's great. A little piece of stamped steel that's been spray painted. I think all the paint on this is spray paint. That's another set of good welds right there. Hmm, at least the fuel system has a, a drain in it. So if you buy horrible gas, you can just drain it all out, put new gas back in. That's cool. Oh, uh, what else? What other features and treasures does this thing behold to us? Okay, that's our subframe. Stamp steel with some control arms. Sway bar bushing, or sway bar with bushings. There's no links, just more bushings here. Hmm, this breaks up front. More struts up front. I wonder if this uses the same struts in the front as it does in the rear. <laughs> Look at that cute little crank pulley right there. So we've got a crankshaft pulley. Got one serpentine belt. Same logo on the belts as what's on the front of the engine, so it's like the same company that makes it. Engine mounts, little alternator, a little water pump, little AC compressor. This thing's cute. AC condenser. Again, that's our radiator. We got a tow hook right here, so when we need to tow it, just hook up to it and just me winch it up on the truck. Little baby tires. Ling Longs, these are Ling Long tires. Yeah, Ling Long. Let's see the size of these bad boys. 145, 70, 12. So it's 145 millimeters wide at the tread depth. The sidewall is 70% of that 145 millimeters on a 12 inch, 12 inch, a 12 inch wheel. How about that? 145, 70, 12. Super fuel economy driven type of device, I guess. It's like a scooter. Yeah, it's a scooter with four wheels. Manual steering, there's no power steering here. It's already a leak. One brake line going out back. Mm, there's a brake line for the front. Wow. I don't think this is legal. There's no way this car could be legal for use in this, uh, in this country. Hmm, here's some run out in the rotors. That's cool. Okay, well, there's not much to look at uh, underneath. Let's let this thing back down again and see what other little treasures are in store on this particular car. Oh, we've got a build error. Look here. There's supposed to be like some kind of a bracket up there. See that right there in the, on top of the fuel tank? That is some kind of a bracket for a hose, but it's not connected to the hose. And I can't fit my, my hands in there. I'm not going that far in. You get stuck. That'd be great. Fire department has to come cut me off from a Chinese car. There's a little exhaust pipe. That's cute. Some wires, some more unpainted surfaces. Yeah. Okay, let's let this thing down. We've seen all that we can see. Lock release coming down. I hope it's heavy enough to make the lift go down. All righty, we're down on the ground. I'm uh, not gonna miss this opportunity to remind all of the new viewers that may have stumbled upon this channel to consider tapping that subscribe button down below. Actually, you know what? That's going to apply to uh, everyone, including the new viewers. 
uh, I have recently become aware that the uh, the unsubscribing YouTube phenomenon has been recently occurring again. And uh, what that is, is folks that thought that they were channel subscribers, and it's not just to my channel, it's others. Um, they, uh, they fail to receive future notifications and they miss out on content that is published. And what we have discovered is uh, for some reason, maybe it's a glitch, maybe it's deliberate, who knows, but uh, viewers have been uh, steadily being, they're being unsubscribed from channels without them knowing about it for reasons that are unknown uh, to the creator community. So uh, if you are a, uh, a long time viewer and thought you are subscribed, please feel free to check your subscription status to the channel down below. And if you are a new viewer and you like this kind of content, uh, also again, please feel free to uh, tap that subscribe button. That way you will not miss out on any future content. And that will end my moment of shameless self-promotion. Now we can get back to uh, the Chineseum here. And look, I have discovered it does have a hood prop. That's the, that's the hood prop mechanism right here. It's kind of attached to, uh, well, it's attached to this little bar thing right here that probably holds the car together. And then it's supposed to go in that little hole there and that's what holds up the, the hood. So it is equipped with a hood prop. Not gonna get into the air filter. Probably should charge the battery. I, I'd like to go take this thing on a drive, but I don't think I want to, uh, I wanna put it together. Well, you know what? I have an idea. Here, we'll just pull that over there out of the side, or out of the way, or off to the side. You know what I meant. It's supposed to get bolted on, but it's not. And <laughs> it's got a lawnmower battery in there. Look at that thing. That's a 100% lawnmower battery, ever start from Walmart land. It's fantastic. It really is a scooter. It's awesome. All right, let's go fetch the, uh, the charger. I'm gonna put that battery on a charger, connect the cables, and then maybe we can go out and take this thing for some kind of a drive. All right, lawnmower battery. I hope this thing's 12 volt. What if it's a six volt car? Well, if it is, my charger will tell me very quickly. Negative, that's a 12 volt. Okay. Put our negatory on there. Get our positive one set up. Good. Move that guy back on over. Plug it in to our receptacles. I installed that myself. Okay, and we're gonna do 10 amps. We'll do it for about an hour to 10 amp charge, okay. So while that's happening, I'm gonna go and find some uh, some type of fasteners here and we can bolt the cables back to the battery lugs. And then, uh, cause I'm not gonna drive it with a jump box attached to it, thing will burn down. But then uh, once we get that connected, we'll see if it starts under its own own battery power. And then maybe we can go out and drive this thing. We'll see how fast it goes. Okay, so it only seems fitting to repair battery cables with battery terminal parts. And since I can't find any other bolts that are gonna fit, I'll just have to steal them from this thing right here. I'm not gonna use this. I just need these guys. I have some washers and some nylock nuts. We'll use those to, uh, to lock down those cables. So I've got two nuts, two bolts, four washers. Let's go get those cables back on. All right, battery charger powered down. Let's get this cable out of here. And we can start to connect the ground cable. Look at that, it just grounds right out to the transmission, like right there. Super minimalistic. And I hope I have enough bolt here to make this connection. I mean, it doesn't have to be super perfect, but it's probably gonna be better than the car, I think better than everything else on the car. I don't know. Okay, let's get that guy on. So we need an 11, and I think that's also an 11. Multiple 11s coming in. Let's get these bolts tight here. Clicks. All right, that one's on. Put our cable back on that side, because we're going to need to continue to charge this in a moment. Let's get situated here with our, with our hardware. See one washer here. We'll run this one through on this side. Oh, that's that's cool. The hole is smashed right there, and it doesn't want to go all the way through. No worries. Full send. Okay, that threaded and went through. Good. 
So let's get the washer on that through and then our other nylock bolt. It has a piece of nylon inserted into the threads and that uh, keeps the bolt from backing off. Let's throw the charger back on this battery and see if we cannot get some electrons into that unit. Maybe we can get this thing to start up all by itself. Mm, more amps. It's not even taking any amperage. Look at that. The gauge does not care. Interesting. Okay. Well, I'm going to take the jumper box over here, plug that in at the same time, and we can charge both of them simultaneously. That way, if I at least need to get the jump bar box on it to get the thing started, the jump box will have more power, and then take the box off and let it run on the alternator. That should work. There we go. Okay, we'll leave that alone for a minute, let it charge up, and then we'll come back and try to restock the engine. All right, checking the meter here. We are getting charging voltage into that battery. Lauren, would you uh, would you be a deer and go inside of this thing and try to start it? It's gonna be your first stick shift lesson. Okay. Uh oh, man, let me clear the rack while we're uh, getting situated here. We're about to go on our test drive. Yeah. Ah, she's stuck in there. How do you get out? Oh, you've got to you have to pull that this little lever over. Okay, so what I want you to do? Grab your uh, grab your stick shift. Yes. Uh, make sure it's in neutral. So no, no, go left and right. See how. See how you've got the H pattern, first, second, third, and fourth? Yeah. Well, you want to be in that little line right there, which oh, is so the- Oh, so make sure it's going left and right. Yeah, go left and right. That way you know you're not in gear, because if you're up in gear, well, this right. thing's so sloppy and crappy that you can't go left and right, but you should, you know, that one went into gear. Anyway, that's neutral right there, okay? Okay. So push the clutch in with your left foot all the way, all right? And now you're able to start it. So you move your seat forward. I, I think uh, I think the thing's down. I don't even know if the seat thing moves. There yeah, go. there okay. you go. Got it. So push the clutch all the way down. Yeah. And then turn your key on. And then. Did it do anything? No. <laughs> all right, go try to start it. Yeah. Same. Just keep hitting the key. It'll eventually. Yeah, you have to turn the radio down. I did. All right, hit the key aggressively. Keep holding down your clutch. Turn the key harder. Turn it. Really? It doesn't even do anything. Hmm, okay. Uh, let me try. Here, hop out, darling. Let me, let me try it. I don't know why. It's because it's a lawnmower. Like, seriously, it has a lawnmower battery in it. Okay, we need to turn off. Where's the blower? Let's turn the blower off to save electricity. Okay, clutch down. Seriously. Uh, all right, only one thing to do. More steam. We need more electrons. Is that good? Yeah. Hey, let's try it again. Let's see if it's gonna crank over. Oh, look, we have to turn the radio down again. Okay, it started again. Let's turn the radio down again. Uh, AC on, full blast. I don't even know, I still don't know what auto fog, auto fog lamps, those are fog lights maybe? I don't know what that, I don't know what it is. Anyway, let's go and uh, let's get our charger and auxiliary battery stuff off this thing and see if it stays running. Some charging system at 13 volts. Let's power this off. Stayed running, that's cool. And still charging at 13 volts, so the alternator is alternating. That's good. Here, let's take our air filter, get that out of the way, and disconnect. Oh, that one already fell off, look. My bottom cable fell off, no worries. Let's get this out of here. Set the jumper box down, and disconnect our battery charger cables right here and that can just kind of 
I guess it bolts on maybe. I don't know. Okay, clear the hood. Get rid of our light. Don't need that under there. Bigger than the whole car. You can go right up here. Dude, powering down. And I'll recover the hood prop. Alright, let's hop back in this heap and uh, let's see how it drives and runs and whatever else. Okay, it's got all the wheels bolted on. That was good. It's as safe as I think it's ever going to be. Lauren's hopping in. She's going to ride with us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't this thing something else? Yeah. It's a rattly piece of junk. I'm buckling in. Yeah, yeah. We need it like a we need motorcycle helmets to <laughs> ride in this thing. I want to make the sunroof go up. What year is this? Uh, it's like a 2023. This is a brand new car. <laughs> yeah. It's got 244 kilometers on it. So that's, I don't know, like 150 miles maybe. I don't even think it has a sticker for what year it is. Yeah, I don't know. It's, is there a sticker in this? Yeah, no, there's no sticker. It has no emissions equipment. It has no sticker. It has no safety gear. I don't even think this classifies as an automobile. Okay, let's see if let's see if we can drive this thing. Cute little horn. My feet barely fit between those pedals down there. Like, barely. Alright, backing out this piece of junk. Safety. Actually, I think we're the most unsafe ones. It's safe everywhere else. Except for in this car. The brakes feel super safe. Super safe. But at least it's not cable operated. Oh my god. <laughs> this thing's something else. <laughs> I'm. I don't even know. I feel like a clown. I know. <laughs> it rattles so much, I can't hear the engine, so I don't know. Oh my god, this has no power. <laughs> this is full throttle. Oh my god, it has nothing. <laughs> what is this thing? Wow. I think this is a. Uh, I think that DeLorean we had was faster than this, and that was uh, remarkably underpowered. This is uh, this is something else. It's not even fast. We need to put a turbo on it. I don't know if it has enough power to go up the hill oh, on the bridge. Man, this is gonna be Seriously, we might not make it. Let's see what it does. Full power. It's wide open. <laughs> it's not going anywhere. It's not. 50 miles per hour. Wait, it's in kilometers. We're only going like 30 miles an hour. No pieces of it don't fly off. It's so bad. It won't go up the hill. It won't accelerate anymore. That's it. That's all we got. In 40 miles an hour. Oh wait, I'm out of gears. It's only a four speed. Alright, we're getting out of here. I'm done. That was maximum speed, like 50 miles per hour. That's as fast as it goes. The speedometer is in, in metric. Wow. Yeah, I thought that was miles first. I was like, wow, we're doing 60. Wrong. Doing 35 miles an hour. Oh, is the AC cold? Like there's not even, yeah. this vent doesn't even work either. Like I thought, I thought it was just a faux vent where it didn't just, it just weren't a, was not adjustable, but there's nothing that comes out of it. So it, it has AC. That's kind of cool. That's like all that it has in a dome light. It sort of doesn't work. Man. Someone paid money for this new. Oh, I put a kilometer on it. We drove it an extra thousand miles. It has depreciated in value. Look, can you see the, the daylight through the doors? Yeah. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Like the inner, the inside door panels are what makes the seal to the outside. It's not even the metal. Awesome. I hope nobody sees us driving this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is, it really is a clown car. Oh my 
So I'm thinking that we should buy this and then um, we can put Ray's Auto Clinic and we can put the website on it and then use it as a spokes vehicle to sell hats and t-shirts. Shop car. Yeah, kinda. Um. I bet that lawnmower over there is faster. I don't even think this is worth like any good to commute to work in. Like I, I wouldn't even, I, I wouldn't drive this. I think this is less safe than a motorcycle. It's certainly a lot slower. And louder. Yeah, it's a lot louder. Even with two mufflers, it's louder. Fourth gear, that's all we get. Maximum speed. I don't even feel like I'm speeding. We're going 40 miles an hour. As fast as we can go and that's the speed limit. That's great. Let's see if the wheels fall off on these train tracks. Nope. That's crazy. All right, guys, we're back to the shop. I'm gonna, I'm gonna park this thing. Uh, I think we're done with the tour of the maximum Chinese vehicle. Like I said, I don't, I don't know what, uh, what we're gonna do with this or what Sam's gonna do with this. I kind of want it just for the novelty of having this, but I don't, I don't know what I would ever do with it. Not too certain. Look, Dave's laughing <laughs> at us. That's great. All right, darling, this is where you get out. I'm gonna let you out right here. Thanks. How do I get out? Um, you have to, you gotta pull this and then push. There you go. That's how it works. All right. Sweet. Yeah. All right, reverse. Put this thing into a parking space, and we're done. Alrighty guys, I think that's all that I can offer you on this particular vehicle. I hooked the battery cables up on it and drove it around the block. Um, again, you know, this is a, it's a novelty video. We're just having some fun today. Uh, I figured you guys would want to see this. I made mention of this car in a previous video towards the end of it. And folks said that they wanted to see a cool little walk around on this, uh, this particular piece of Chineseum. Um, I hope this satisfies your need to experience uh, what they have over here versus what, or what they have over there versus what we have over here. Uh, clearly, this thing is a cost-driven uh, type of uh, type of vehicle, meaning cost, um, or cost meaning there is no cost because this is made out of out of kids' toys. Uh, I don't feel safe in this. I would never recommend owning, driving, or buying one of these things. Um, like I said, I don't even know how it got here and if it's even legal to have this thing here or drive on the roads rather, but uh, it is what it is. Anyway, again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video tour of this uh, this car thing. Um, I sort of enjoyed it, but I'm, I'm going to be glad to get out of this thing and never have to deal with this again. So uh, all that being said, as always, like thank you guys for watching this video. Certainly hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please feel free to let me know about that in the comment section down below. Do not forget to tap that like and subscribe button while you're down there. And most importantly, have yourselves a fantastic day. See you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. In a video, in a Chineseum automobile. Powering down. Even the ignition key is Chineseum. It's so cheap. Goodbye, Activa 001.